So Esme, welcome to Con of Thrones. Thank you. Really excited to have you. Um, your character on the show is not a character in the books. So That's correct. I'm very interested to find where you took your inspiration uh, for Roz. She's northern. Mm -hmm. uh, so can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Um, you know, a lot of the inspiration really came from um, the people that I know in the north of England. Um, you know, both my parents are from up north. My mom's from the Lake District, my dad's from Manchester. So I knew um, my whole family was northern. So I guess there's like a certain like sense of humor and an attitude towards life that northerners have. And that I was sort of the basis of who was was going to be. Um, and as you said, they she's not in the books. And they hadn't told me anything about the character arc. In fact, when I got cast in Game of Thrones, I was only meant to do that one scene with Tyrion in the first episode. So they didn't even know that they were going to keep me around as long as they did. So it was kind of fun getting to uh, develop this character. And as it was almost like a um, dual process of me creating a character and then the writers seeing what I was creating and then going forward from there and it would go back and forth so it was because really interesting. You're, you're quite different from Shay who's more of the associate uh, and then we have you know, obviously the people in King's Land and you, yeah. you, you had that more fun playful attitude mm -hmm. than the more some of the serious attitudes we saw in the show so that was really interesting. Um, so they kept you around, they really liked you then. Yeah, I guess awesome. so, until they didn't. <laughs> So obviously you're, you're you know in in the first season you're you're interacting with Tyrion and you're interacting with Theon mm -hmm. um, and then you get to King's Landing. Can you talk about a little bit about your experience with King's Landing because it's obviously a little bit dif different than your part in Winterfell. I think things got a lot more serious once I got to King's Landing. You know, in Winterfell, I guess it was lighter, and easier, and simpler in a way. Um, once Roz gets to King's Landing, that's when starts things start getting complicated. She becomes a spy for Varys, and all of a sudden she's thrown into this more political world, and I think she ends up out of her depth, which is how she ends up Yeah, I mean, she dead. gets crossbowed by a dropper. Is he yes. really as lovely as he is ever he behind is. the scenes? He he's is. so hated by everyone. I mean, he and does he's such a, such a nice guy, which is what makes it so dis disturbing when all of a sudden on set he turns from being this really super sweet, studious guy who sits there between takes working and reading his textbooks, and then the next thing you know, it's Joffrey. And it's is testament to how amazing Jack is um, as an actor. So uh, you got to visit obviously, visit, obviously beautiful locations. Mm -hmm. uh, that's part one of the best parts of Game of Thrones. Can you tell us maybe about some of like the behind the scenes bloopers or something like something that was really unique? Because we, we get the behind the scenes stuff, but yeah. maybe maybe something um, that you might be able to tell us an interaction with a, a certain cast member, <laughs> something really fun, like somebody because they play pranks on the like they uh, get them in the script. Oh, you've been killed off, like Jon Snow in season two. Yeah, you're yeah. dead. Um, you're actually not a main character, so well, anything I, like that. To me, the one that always sticks out is when I first met Christian Yarn, who plays Hodor. Yeah. He's a great guy, really sweet, um, and. I walked into the makeup trailer and there's Christian and it's a scene in the nude scene he has to do and he's getting this giant prosthetic penis like <laughs> attached to himself and that was my first experience of meeting Christians. I just walked in and I'm like, hi! There's this guy with this like giant schlong sort of being, I don't even know, added to him. Um, so that was pretty funny. That was the first, and he loves to tell that story as well. That that's like the first time we met. When I was watching the episode, I was just like, "Is that thing really yeah. swinging around like that?" <laughs> I know. You know. It was like an elephant's trunk. It was very disturbing. Uh, so, so you've obviously uh, been doing other works. Magicians. Got mm -hmm. to check you out on that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, magicians is awesome. It's if you've not seen it, it's a little bit like Harry Potter, but way more grown up. Um, a lot more adult content, I suppose. Um, there's some gory stuff in it. Like they, they, there is like, some gory stuff. And there's like some su supernatural yes, elements, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's fun. My character is fairly mysterious, and I don't want to spoil it for you if you've not seen it, but she's all kind, she has all kinds of different layers, and the um, show plays around with time and different worlds, so there's so much possibility for what can happen in that show. Yeah, it's a lot of fun.
So, um, you know, Magicians, Game of Thrones, uh, is there any, anything that you're going to be upcoming? Uh, so I'm in Supergo. Um, I have a recurring role in Supergo. I think my episodes start airing, I believe, next week. I could be wrong, but I think my storyline's just about to start. That's on the CW, correct? That's on the CW, yes. And, and I can't tell you anything more. The Arrowverse and uh, Flash yes. and all of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I got a fun question. We've been asking, uh, we asked Seabelle this as well, and she kind of gave, uh, you know, she was very close to Tyrion. She thought Tyrion would be a great picture for the Iron Throne, but if, did, have you watched, uh, are you caught up to date on oh, the show? Yes. Oh okay. yeah, yes, oh yeah, yes. Yeah, so, so I mean, we're <laughs> Still all, we're, a big fan. We're all, we're all addicts here. Uh, but if you had to, by the end, if there is an Iron Throne in the end, who do you think would be a good choice to, because we, we know things are gonna kind of go mm. south with the dragons and the White Walkers, there's gonna be right. some problems. Who do you think would be a good choice for the Iron Throne? It's challenging, because I think Varys, in a way, would be, I know, everyone, everybody always gives me a look when I say that. <laughs> what? <laughs> because I think that he's possibly one of the few players in the Game of Thrones who, I don't think he's evil and I don't think he has a selfish agenda per se. Tyrion obviously would be awesome, but then I don't really want to, I love Tyrion so much, I don't really want to curse him with him sitting on that throne because Nothing good can come from I've never on that heard thing. anyone say Varys. Obviously, in the books, his intentions are a little bit more different. Um, oh, I haven't read all of the books. So, so, yeah, I mean, he's doing the kind of the Blackfire thing. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for You're hanging welcome. out today, and uh, we hope you have an awesome stay here at Con of Thrones, and uh, hopefully, we we'll get you. to check out some of your stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much. Cheers. Hey, everyone, it's Kyle from Azor Hype here. I had an absolute blast interviewing Esme. I got to chat with her a little bit before the interview. Really, really lovely, very smart, beautiful. Like I said, she was radiant and really, really positive. Had an absolute blast. Of course, if you are enjoying this Con of Thrones content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video. I have a lot more coming. I have an interview with Sibel Kelly, who played Shay. I have an interview with Miltos, who plays Sirio. And we got uh, another interview with Paula Fairfield as well. So if you're looking forward to more of this Con of Thrones footage, make sure you leave a comment. Let us know how we did in the interview. And of course, if you do want to support the channel, check us out on Patreon at Azora Hype. You can sign up from $1 for $5, and it helps me to go events like these and uh, get interviews and do fun stuff like this. So thanks again for watching, everyone, and I will see you all in the next video. Hype and love.